Marlene Hutchinson, and welcome to Tips for Guitar Playing Success, streaming now on Amazon Music. As many of you know, I've been sharing my guitar playing tips every Thursday for more than 10 years. It's been my way to hopefully help you stay motivated, be inspired, and continue expanding your guitar playing journey. If you're interested in more learning resources like my guitar courses, lesson of the month club, coaching, Thursday tips blog, and more, go to my website, marlenesmusic.com. And for anyone who's listening and feeling like you're missing out on all the guitar playing fun, you can easily get started with my super simple Learn to Play Guitar in a Day course. Now, on to today's tip. This podcast is brought to you in part by Gator. Whether you just need a bag to gig with on the weekends or a frequent flyer needing a flight-friendly TSA series case or a dedicated road warrior bringing your instruments on tour, Gator has a solution for you. World-class guitar and bass players, DJs, and recording professionals know for the stuff you love, Guard it with Gator. Today's tip is start soloing on your guitar. What do Nancy Wilson, Eddie Van Halen, Joan Jett, Jimi Hendrix, and Joe Pass have in common? If you said they're guitar players, you're right. But their commonality goes beyond just being guitar players. They're well-known for their guitar-playing abilities and celebrated for their amazing and creative guitar soloing. In this episode, I'll talk about how you can start soloing on your guitar. As always, I love to give a shout out to my listeners around the world. So this week, hello and thank you to those of you listening in Guyana, Hong Kong, Cayman Islands, Greece, and Canada. The talented guitarists I just mentioned are certainly on a list of the who's who of guitar playing. And of course, there are many more players to include. And in all likelihood, at the mere mention of their names, you might have felt intimidated. You may have even thought, I can't play like them. Maybe not yet, but this is very important to keep in mind. They all had to start somewhere. So let's get you started on your guitar soloing path. First, what is guitar soloing? Basically, it's a creative musical expression where a guitarist takes the lead on a short or long section of a song, sometimes called riffs or licks. A solo might be an introduction, a piece in the middle of a song, an ending, or it can be riffs during the verses and or choruses. Guitar soloing is typically single note musical sections that can be played along with and complementary to a rhythm guitar or can be played as a single guitarist. It can be improvised on the spot or written in advance and is typically composed of a melody or melodies or in harmony to the song's melody. To begin with, here's a few concepts that can help you understand how to develop and play solos. One is to know your fretboard. Two, learn the notes in chords. Three is finger dexterity. And four is to learn scales. Hey, do you know someone who would like to play guitar? It's never been easier with my Learn to Play Guitar in a Day course. And... If you or someone you know already plays guitar and wants to learn more, then my unlimited lessons, classes, and courses, and my coaching sessions could be just the right thing. The links are in the show notes on your podcast app, or you can find them on my website, marlenesmusic.com. Let's start with getting to know your fretboard, also called the fingerboard. Each string and each fret on a string represents a single note. 
Today I'll be referencing the notes on string six, but don't fret, haha. -ha. Next week I'll go into more detail about the entire fretboard. String six, when played open, is an E. When pressing on fret one, the sixth string is an F. Fret two is an F sharp. Fret three is G. Fret four is a G sharp. Fret five is an A. Fret six is an A sharp. Fret seven is a B. Fret eight is a C. Fret nine is a C sharp. Fret ten is a D. Fret eleven is a D sharp. And fret twelve is an E. Now let's dive a little deeper into the notes in chords. Each chord has a set of notes. For example, the A chord includes A, C sharp, and E. A is, of course, the root of the A chord. The root note can help you to begin navigating the fingerboard for playing soloing sequences. For example, if a song has an A chord, then you would find notes that are compatible with the A chord notes and then build a solo from there. As far as finger dexterity, the point of solos is to maintain a pleasant dynamic flow to your note sequences. That means you need to have the ability to move quickly to and from your notes. It's also super important that you use the correct fingers because that will help you move more efficiently on the fretboard. And if you want some exercises to help your finger dexterity, check out my episode on September 17th, 2020, or you can find these exercises in my unlimited lesson program videos. Scales are an important basis to understanding music and for developing solos. I've talked about scales in previous episodes on October 6, 2020, March 19, 2021, and September 30, 2021. So if you want to learn more about scales, check out those episodes, or you might want to check out my unlimited lessons where I talk about and demonstrate scales. Now I'd like to show you how these concepts can be put to practical use. Here's a formula that can be used with most chords. Basically, this will guide you to the notes within a scale that are compatible and complementary to a chord. It's a set sequence of notes with easy finger positions. And again, this formula can be used with most chords as long as you understand where the root note can be found on the sixth string. I'll show you how this works with the A chord. So if you start on string six and go to the fifth fret, that's an A note. The note that's the root of the A chord. Go down one string to string five and pressing on the fifth fret with your first finger, you are now playing a D. From there, go two frets over to the seventh fret with your third finger and you're playing an E. Go down one more string and do the same thing playing on the two frets, five and seven, using your first and third fingers and you'll be playing G and A. And to add a little more fun into this, you can do the same thing again on string three and you're playing C and D. So these notes D, E, G, A, and C and D are complementary to the A chord. These notes can be played in various sequences. They can be played over the A chord if, for example, you're playing with another guitar player, or they can be played as a single guitar player where you can play it after the A chord to add a little pizzazz to your song or it can be played in lieu of the A chord. This same formula can be used for most any chord, which is why this is a great place to start. Guitar soloing can bring an element of style and creativity to your songs and feel truly exhilarating to play. Today, it's been my intention to help you get started, and who knows, in time, you could be the next Jimi Hendrix. 
I hope this episode's tip has helped you to continue expanding your guitar playing skills and knowledge. If you'd like to learn more, please check out the many learning resources available at marlenesmusic.com. Thank you for joining today's podcast. And as I like to say, play on.